Assalamu alaikum and a very good afternoon to everyone. Uh, firstly, I'd like to apologize for last Monday due to the technical problem that we have in the campus regarding the network that we always have. Uh, today, we're going to look at um, another chapter on ground improvement, which we'll be looking at uh, deep replacement. Okay? Deep replacement techniques. Okay, we're going to be looking at deep replacement techniques. And how does this lecture go about is that you're going to refer to your slide that I've uploaded and then whatever sub that I've mentioned, you need to refer to that. Or whatever figure I mentioned, you need to um, go about the, uh, the slides. Then only you're able to capture whatever information uh, that's uh, important that I want to deliver for today. Okay? Right, before we go uh, deep into deep replacement, uh, we're going to look at um, the identification of problematic layer that you're going to find at site. So what are those? Let's have a look at it first. Okay, so I'm going to show you through here. Okay. All right, the first um, thing that you might encounter is uh, the uncontrolled field over here. And you can see that the top layer is the uncontrolled field. And the bottom layer is natural soil, uh, fat clay, right? So by which, when it comes to uh, the loading on top, if you want to apply, both two needs to be improved in terms of uh, its bearing capacity, the stiffness, and the densification as well. So the feature needs to be improved before uh, the loading is being applied uh, on top of this type of soil layer, okay? So backfill and control fill is mostly uh, consists of a different type of soil. Uh, even garbage is exist in uncontrolled fill. If you ever come across this, then uh, you're likely to have uh, a severe type of ground improvement. Okay. Okay. Uh, before we move on to another problematic soil, uh, you need to understand the difference between each of the soil that you're gonna have for the ground improvement. Okay. As simple as putting a soil that you uh, obtain from site in a bottle and then you put water in it and it shake and you might see this type of result uh, afterwards. For example, uh, after one minute, you can see the sand layer uh, at the bottom here, uh, followed by the silt layer after two hours and then the clay layer when the water cleans out. Okay, so you can see the different uh, layer of soil that exists within a soil that you grab from the site. Okay. And in terms of the size, you can see that uh, this fine portion over here is the clay particle. Okay. If it were to compare to the silt, so silt is much more bigger in the particle, and then the sand, and then the, uh, the, uh, the, the aggregates. Okay. So that's the difference in sizes when it comes to uh, the soil. Okay, so you need to know uh, the different type of soil in terms of uh, the difference between one to another and then the size particle as well because you're going to be selecting uh, the ground improvement techniques on a later chapter. Okay, so this is um, just to show you that uh, when it comes to soft soil, this is what we're going to be expecting. All right, um, if you uh, step on a soft soil, so you're going to penetrate down because the soft soil uh, does not have enough bearing capacity to uh, take your load. So what we do at site is that we apply this um, uh, geogrid, uh, for example, and then we just put the loading on top and you can see a big difference here. So this is what happened when it comes to soft soil and we have geogrid uh, applied on here so you can see the effect on both sides. Okay. So another type of problematic soil is uh, of soft soil. Okay. All right, this is another type of soil uh, that is found at um, perhaps the agricultural land, okay? Especially when talking about paddy field, all right? A soil that uh, expands, okay? So this is uh, not good when it comes to um, getting the load imposed on top of this, okay? Because it creates instability, okay? Uh, water will come through and then weaken the whole structure and then uh, over time, um, you might have a collapse of your structure in the end. Okay. Another type of problematic soil is uh, when you have like a, a hole inside. Uh, in this case, it's like a sinkhole. 
So you need to overcome this uh, before you move towards the construction of your um, infrastructure or structures. Okay. Another type of uh, problematic soil is um, with the liquefaction type of soil. All right. So as mentioned earlier, liquefaction is a phenomenon whereby um, the, the changes of the soil behavior from um, solid state to liquid state. Okay, you can see here uh, previously before the liquefaction happened, um, these loosely packed grains are held together by friction. Okay, when earthquake happen and when the water pressure uh, gets up, and then this thing will happen. It loses its friction and then the soil will behave like uh, water. Okay, it flows. And you can see the sinking of uh, all of this uh, structure on top. So that's one of the other problematic soil that you're going to encounter. Okay. Uh, another one is perhaps um, it's very prone at a country where there's four seasons, snow, snow area. Uh, we have frozen soil. So that's another type of problematic soil that we can deal with. Okay. And then uh, another aspect uh, from the problematic soil is the freeze and thaw effect. Okay. Uh, whereby when you have a crack induced in this uh, particular a grain over here and then the water penetrates in and then it's freeze and then during summer it, it melts, freeze melt continuously and then you can have like a, a, a crack on this. So it actually uh, affects this grain uh, very significantly so it can't help things together. Okay, so as for today, we're going to look at deep replacement. Again, I'm going to be um, explaining to you on the introduction, what is deep replacement all about. Uh, secondly, we're going to look at the principle. Okay, what, the, what are the considerations that you have uh, made inside deep replacement. The thirdly is on design uh, consideration. Okay, what aspect that we consider inside the design of this deep replacement, uh, design parameters followed by the design example, and then do and don'ts during construction, and lastly, of course, the Q&A and the Q&C. Okay, as a start, if you look at figure 5.1 over here, we have different variety of uh, deep replacement uh, method. Okay, but to put it easy, I'm going to just show you um, using this. Alright, this is a setup of uh, the explanation on deep replacement. Okay, now I've already uh, made such a way that um, the white color uh, granule material is the weak layer, weak soil, and the rest are um, the strong soil over here. Okay, so in earlier topics, when you have the existence of weak a soil at the very shallow layer of a soil site, okay, you might as well um, excavate this easily, all right, and then you're gonna be replaced this with much more uh, improved material, okay. However, when it comes to uh, the weak layer um, is being introduced at a uh, great depth, and then this will see a difference between the shallow approach and the deep approach where you need special equipment and special machineries to actually take the weak material out and replace it. Okay, so it can uh, withstand whatever loading that you design on top. Okay, so what are the techniques that is being used? Uh, the first thing is to take out the uh, soft soil. How does uh, the industry take out the soil is by uh, the first one is by uh, introducing water so for a certain type of soil to remove the weak layer you introduce water so the water will able to change the uh, the soil condition into slurry uh, condition and then is easily being extracted out so this is for a certain type of soil where they use water okay and then when water is introduced here okay is easily being replaced, all right? And then they're gonna fill in back with any improved material. They're gonna compact it, and then uh, the the weak layer is replaced with a much more improved layer, so it can withstand any 
a loading on top. Okay. So one of the uh, approach is by using water. Okay. Another approach is by using air, air pressure. Okay. So for certain type of weak soil is able to be removed by introducing of air pressure. Okay. So you, for example, this is just a concept. Uh, take a straw and blow, and the weak layer will uh, 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 get out from this. Uh, uh, set up over here and then you're going to replace it accordingly okay all right this is example of the loading that you need uh, to design on top okay so of course if you uh, apply the loading directly on a soft soil it will have some effect and the one that we need is this type of soil okay where you can actually uh, cater for the loading over here all right so whatever um, approach that you uh, have or different type of machineries that you use the most basic introduction on deep replacement is uh, just this okay you have a weak layer in a great depth remove it um, regardless of what means all right and then you're going to replace it okay either you're going to replace it like uh, using a granular material for example or a concrete column so again it's going to go back to the site and how you're going to design it all right okay so if you can see over here i have uh, a granular material okay and if i were to replace uh, the weak material with granular material for example so i will remove this okay so it doesn't happen at site you need to use equipment but for a demonstration it's easily being removed okay and then i'm going to apply uh, this granular material over here okay it's like rocks okay so when you apply the load it's easily being catered by this uh, granular material over here so you can withstand whatever on top but of course you need to remove all the white things over here clean and then you can put the granular material here all right so what do you get by doing this you get a stable uh, condition of the soil and also uh, a good uh, permeability aspect for the water to pass through it also acts as a drainage when granular material is uh, put over here okay uh, the water can actually pass through easily okay so that's one of the advantages when you have granular material okay as simple as that okay right um, so again i i already uh, mentioned to you there are a lot of uh, techniques that you can use all right you just need a lot of reading but the basic is that uh, whenever you have a soft soil in uh, great depth, uh, you take it out uh, regardless of what means and then you place it with um, a stronger material. Okay, that's all about it. Okay, um, researchers have also uh, managed to come up with, uh, uh, um, you can see this is a, a graph that's showing uh, the suitability of which aspect okay how you're going to do this is that you take uh, a sample from the site okay put it laboratory and then under sieve test and then you're going to plot the graph size dis uh, distribution graph and see whether it falls in which uh, category here okay if it's of sand with this type of uh, grain size curve you're gonna likely go for vibro compaction method where else, if you have a sand or silty type, you're going to go for vibro replacement method. Okay, so there's a lot of uh, established information that you can use uh, in order to have uh, the best type of uh, deep replacement for your site. Okay, so this is one of it. All right. So whatever I show you here, you need to uh, look further into um, extra additional information. All right. Okay, next we move on to the application. Of course, the deep replacement is focusing uh, much on the increased bearing capacity. That's what we do. Okay, reduce and accelerate settlement. Okay, increase your strength, of course, for slope stability and increase resistance to liquefaction. Okay, uh, if you want to go to this setup over here, it's as simple as this one here. Yeah? Now, before you improve the material, it already have 
uh, bearing capacity, but it's not sufficient enough. Okay, after you have introduced ground improvement, for example, a column, okay, uh, the soil bearing capacity has been improved, and then you can apply the load on top. Okay, so that's how simple uh, the concept is when it comes to the, the improvement of soil bearing capacity. Okay, so this is it right here. All right, of course, a uh, different type of approach, they're going to have advantage and also a uh, limitation. All right, so not all um, deep replacement is suitable for any of your site. You need to go through research and laboratory, in and out of laboratory, uh, and sit down together to uh, actually do the decision making. Okay, I'm going to give you one example of advantages of the sand compaction column. So this is one of the deep replacement method. And here it says that um, when it comes to the advantages, of course, the first one is uh, with regards to the cost. Okay, Use of lower cost material often less expensive than stone. All right, as simple as that. Uh, when it comes to sand compaction is a fast construction. All right. Third, fully supported hole by a casing during construction. So it's easy when it comes to the installation of the uh, supported hole. And lastly, limited intrusion by surrounding soil. All right. What does it mean, intrusion? Okay, something that you need to see is that, okay, when you replace this by sand, for example, sand compaction layer, okay, sand and it's well compacted, uh, it's hard for other material to intrude inside, to pass us through because it's well compacted. So the, the permeability will become lesser. Compare if you have like a granular material, okay, the intrusion of other soil will go inside those uh, big pores between this granular material. So the permeability in terms of uh, using granular material is higher compared to the sand. All right, okay. So whatever statement that have it here, you need to actually channel it to a much more simpler presentation uh, using this type of uh, presentation. Okay. Okay, let's look at um, the principle, yeah? The principle over here. Okay, we've looked at introduction, explained to you uh, using this uh, setup over here. Now, we look at the uh, principle, what, what consideration that we have for this, all right? So, the function of deep replacement is actually to um, have the flowing function. For the first one is densification. So, please uh, understand what's densification about. Uh, load bearing, reinforcement, so the purpose of having deep replacement is one of it is reinforcement, uh, stress distribution, and drainage in any geotechnical application. Okay, if you want to look at densification, so the term here means that um, it's the rearrangement of particles into a denser state, okay, whereby the void ratio of geomaterial decreases as easy as that. Okay? And it can be obtained uh, by four principles, which is first one is static or kneading pressure, uh, dynamic loading uh, uh, due to liquefaction. Okay, Liquefaction is a natural hazard, but after liquefaction, uh, the soil will actually become stable. So that's one of how we get the soil to become densified. And lastly is due to consolidation. You can see um, the, the densification can be obtained by either natural phenomenon or by uh, man-made, either by uh, inducing pressure or by natural um, uh, introduction, such as the liquefaction and consolidation. Okay, right. One of the uh, principle behind um, deep replacement is load transfer mechanism. We want to see how the load is actually transferred from the top, which is from the superstructure, uh, to the uh, footing and foundation, and then through the soil. Okay, so that's the main purpose of load transfer mechanism. Okay, the first one is looking at equal stress versus equal strain. There are two types of model that we can use in terms of the stress uh, transfer mechanism. Okay, so if you can see at the figure 5.3 here, 
uh, there's A and B. Okay, the first A shows equal strain. Okay, this is the first uh, model whereby um, the stress applied from both soil and both column uh, will affect in the same settlement. So they will settle evenly. Okay, so this is when you consider when you have a rigid footing. Okay, so this is the first model that you can use uh, for your design. All right, the second model is that when the stress from the saw and the column, uh, when it settles, it has different value of settlement. Okay, so settlement of the saw is not equal to the settlement of the column. Okay, so two types of model that you can consider. Okay, usually this one is considered for rigid footing and this one is considered uh, for uh, flexible footing. Okay, such as uh, anything from the tire pressure. Okay, such as pavement, uh, trains, rail, and also air tra uh, traffic pavement, uh, air traffic pavement as well. Okay, so for buildings, we usually go for this one. Okay, where the settlement we assume to uh, have the equal value from the soil and also from the column itself. Okay, so this is the first type of uh, load transfer mechanism. Okay. Uh, the second one is we consider uh, this one, yeah, one dimensional unit cells. Okay, first model is without a deformation of the column, so we consider this one. Second is when we consider with the deformation of column. Okay, you can see this more in your design example later, but this is something that you need to consider whether you want the first model to be incorporated in your design and or you want the second model. Okay. Right, of course, uh, they also have a stress and strain relationship as well. So from figure 5.6 here, uh, it shows the stress strain relationship of the column and also the soil as well. Okay, just to give you a brief idea of uh, what's going on when the load is applied and how the mechanism is being explained by all these graphs. Okay. Now, besides that, uh, there's also a trace diagram over here. Okay, where researchers have connect between different aspects. For example, here it shows settlement. They connect to the shear stress and also link to the vertical stress. So the researchers has established such information uh, for a basic understanding on what deep replacement is all about. Okay. So every single uh, figure that I've shown you on the load uh, mechanism is actually to uh, develop the formulation that you're going to use to calculate the parameters uh, when deep replacement is introduced inside your design. Okay, right. Uh, besides that, we always also consider failure mode as well. Like any other type of material, um, they need to consider how does the uh, deep replacement uh, fail. So from here, we have four type of failure. Okay. The first one is A, okay, which is, what's this, crushing. So the, it can fail by crushing. Your deep replacement can be a fail by crushing overload. Okay, this is one of the failure mode. The second one is a shear punching, right? Similar to your slab structure. Uh, third one, we have a bulging effect. And the last one is on the, oh, sorry, this is punching. Uh, this is shear, punching, and the bulging. So four effect over here. Okay, you can uh, see the dots down here. Okay, so that's the figure over there. Okay, now we look at design consideration. What are the uh, considerations that we have for a deep replacement? I'm just going to be introducing you to the general rules here. Okay, when it comes to deep replacement, the first thing you need uh, to start off with is the selection of the fill material. Okay, so they have like established uh, a formulation for you to choose your backfill material, whether it's suitable or not. So from this uh, formula, this is the rating system uh, developed by Brown, a formulation where you insert the D50, D20, D10 value from your uh, soil sample from site, and then uh, you can calculate the SN over here. 
right? So SN here refers to the suitability number. Okay, if you calculate your suitability number between zero to ten, so it's an excellent backfill. So that's that's one of the uh, selection that you can use for your backfill. And of course, unsuitable is when you have more than fifty. So it actually reflect back to your uh, grain size distribution chart uh, uh, during laboratory tests. All right. So that's the general rule on backfill. They also have um, proposed a pattern that you can do when it comes to deep replacement, uh, such as this one. Okay, you can have of this type the A, the first pattern, second type uh, this pattern, and third type this pattern. All right. Why? Because they have studied that such replacement is able to have higher bearing capacity and able to effectively um, increase uh, this, the property of the uh, the loading on top. Okay, so you can choose between these three pattern. Okay, okay. Another type of aspect is also the diameter of column. So the diameter of column depend on the equipment used to install the column. Okay. And they also have established some information as well. If you look at table 5.2 in your slides, okay, one example is that if column type is of a sand compaction column, so the diameter is between 0 0.6 to 0 0.8 meter. So you get a rough um, estimation of the diameter of column that you can use for your deep replacement. Okay. Uh, another aspect is area replacement ratio. Okay, where we look into um, when columns are installed, the area re replacement ratio is defined as the ratio of the cross-sectional area of the column to the tributary area of the column, as shown in figure before. Okay, this is uh, to calculate this over here. All right, some aspect that you need to calculate area replacement ratio, and also we look at depth of improvement. Okay, we, we should know how much depth that we should improve. Okay. And perhaps the last one is area of improvement as well. Okay. Not all the area that we need to improve, some can always stand and some a certain area needs to be uh, improved as well. So all these aspects, if you want to look it more easily, you can have this again. Okay. So if you are looking inside this uh, plan drawing over here, okay. So just now is the backfill material that you need to um, um, find what suitable backfill material that you can use for your site. Uh, another aspect is the area. Oh no, is the pattern? Sorry. So the pattern shows like this, yeah. So if you arrange in such a way, the pattern is like this. So this is the pile, uh, you can say the depth re deep replacement. Okay, I'm going to arrange this in such a way, it's like this. Okay, it's a, like a, um, a square, a square, one, two, three, and four. Okay, so there's a formulation to calculate whether this pattern is effective or not. Okay, that's where you find it in the text later on, all right? Okay, the pattern and then the area of uh, the improvement okay and also the depth how much depth you are going to be introducing uh, at the deep replacement okay so these are all the general rules that you can have for deep replacement okay so by looking back at the slide over here okay design parameters and uh, procedures okay so in design parameters uh, these are the parameters that you should obtain before you conduct any deep replacement aside, okay? Such as the first one, soil type. So this goes back to the soil mechanic that you have earlier. Whether you want to determine uh, cohesionless or cohesive soil, the thickness and depth of the problematic soil, depth of groundwater table. So all of this uh, shouldn't be a problem when it comes to the extraction of data because uh, it's very straightforward, okay? Uh, just go for SI and then you'll be able to cater most of this. Okay, so design parameters is mentioned here and the design procedures as well, step by step. Okay, again, it'll be more clearer when you have an example later on. Okay, okay let's move on directly to uh, the construction. Okay. 
Okay, not much on the construction, but I like to highlight on the quality control and assurance. This is something important. Okay, when you introduce a deep replacement at site, okay, how do you know whether it's successful or within the specification? So the first aspect is the location and dimension. Okay, of course that um, whatever installation at field, you should follow design drawing. Okay, so the geotechnical engineer will design how the uh, deep replacement uh, layout looks like, what are the types of uh, equipment that's to be used. The, the thing that the contractor has to do is just to follow the design accordingly. So this is the first step in the QC and QA. All right, the location and dimension. Make sure it's whatever that the uh, geotechnical engineer uh, give you. All right. Next is on the fill, fill material. Again, uh, you need to use uh, the best type of fill material because you want to improve all the features, all right? And then the installation procedures as well. So in here, we have sand compaction column, all right? Stone columns and also ram aggregate columns. So all of this is assisted by this diagram, how it looks like, yeah? Okay. For the sand compaction column, this is how it looks like, how it's supposed to be conducted. So if we follow the step-by-step -step process, uh, you'll be able to um, uh, do the work within the QA and QC aspect. All right. So it's a step-by-step -step process. Yeah? Okay. Okay. And then, of course, the performance evaluation. All right. Under the Q&A and Q&C, you also need to uh, measure uh, an item of your uh, work that has been conducted. Okay. Okay. So the first um, information is time for field evaluation. When do you want to do uh, the the test? Actually, all right. So here it says performance evaluation of granular column in coriolis soil can be performed right after the completion of installation. So it can be done right after. However, performance evaluation of granular column in cohesive soil should be done in two uh, to four weeks. All right. So it depends on the material. Okay. It takes time for it to become stable. So from this information here, different store, uh, type of soil will have different type of settle. Not settlement, but how it settles to become uh, improve okay so it takes one soil to have the test conducted as as soon as possible but another type of soil needs to be conducted only after two to four weeks after the installation of the uh, replacement right all right as always you can always do soil sampling again and penetration tests see whether uh, the deep replacement that has been conducted uh, is able to achieve uh, such uh, design criteria that you have designed okay for example uh, the first layer should be 50 blows so when you do the SPT you you should get the 50 blows as well if not then you have to redo back the deep replacement all right all right uh, this is figure 5.26 uh, location of penetration test square pattern and triangle pattern uh, you can follow this accordingly one has been established for you Okay, and in the end, just to check whether the deep replacement is um, successfully conducted is again by applying plate loading tests, all right, to calculate the settlement and also uh, the bearing capacity. Uh, perhaps this is the most important type of testing when it comes to the ground improvement, whether you have actually improved the soil bearing capacity uh, after you have uh, conducted the work, okay. So that's more or less about the deep replacement, some very basic introduction. Uh, what are the principles that has been considered? Um, we're going to look at the formulation, the parameters inside the design example. I'm going to make one uh, video for design example. We're going to go step by step procedure in knowing more what we are actually calculating. All right. To give you just a brief um, idea of what we actually calculated after deep replacement is first one when you introduce um, the element of deep replacement we need to calculate the settlement because we are putting loading so 
uh, one aspect is the settlement. The settlement should within a certain uh, range, then it's acceptable for deep replacement. That shows that the deep replacement is successful. So that's one uh, calculation that we need to look at is the settlement. Second one is the soil bearing capacity. How much has we improved? Okay. For example, before we improve, this is maybe 10. Okay, the value is 10. After it's improved, 20. So we need to calculate that, how much we has improved mm -hmm. and whether that soil bearing capacity can actually withstand the structure on top. Okay, as simple as that. So two types of um, parameter that we need to find after deep replacement. Uh, the first one is the uh, settlement value and second one is on the soil bearing capacity. Okay, so that's all for uh, the lecture on deep replacement. Okay, I hope that uh, it has uh, show you some simplicity about understanding on deep replacement topic. All right, we're gonna be uh, looking at another chapter later on next week. All right, if I'm unable to go online, I'm gonna make uh, the same recording as well. Okay, so um, yeah, you take care and see you again next time. Thank you for your time.